and he had the virus. And, and it's just a shame that people think, no, how could you say this? This is Juma. But you know what? It has happened in the past. Baby, you can call me a superman. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Um, this is our reaction channel. We do everything we come across or anything we come across, and you guys can also suggest what you want to see on this channel: music, trailers, um anything that you want us to react to even if it concerns coronavirus we'll do it for you um yeah other than just doing reactions we also have a vlogging channel called funny and jesse to win or we put po i posted the other day and you can actually check it out very short clip hope you guys enjoy uh we also have a patreon account funny and jesse make sure to check it out follow it become a member one of those things we you can also find us on um Podbean and or iTunes podcast. Let me just say we have a podcast in short called Diving In with Funny and Jesse, and we have great conversations there. Just go there, listen to one of the podcasts, let us know what you think, listen to another one, suggest what you want to listen about or what you want to see us talk about, and we'll do it. Uh, a big shout out to everyone that's been supporting us. And just being with us throughout this journey, we really appreciate you guys and we're very, very thankful. So thank you. There's not many things I can say, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you guys are doing all right. And yeah, you can also find me on WordPress. The link should be in the community somewhere I write from time to time and I'm trying to be consist consistent. So Make sure to just read one of the poems I've written or something. But if you love reading short things, you can follow my Instagram, Safani Lungu. It should show somewhere on the screen. And just check it out. Let me know what you think of what I write and I'll be happy. So today I'm going to be reacting to praying in the masjid, masjid with coronavirus Mufti Menk. I always love reacting to Mufti Menk. I think I'm his biggest fan. So... Without wasting time, let's get into the video. We're not only talking about events and mass gatherings that are being cancelled, we're talking about the haram, yani the, the, the city that never sleeps has finally come to a pause. And we're having masajid around the world that are saying, Sallu fi buyutikum, pray in your homes. It's madness, Sheikh. It is, but we have to rise to the occasion and face reality. I can confess that at the beginning, when I heard about Corona, I thought it was being a bit exaggerated. And I thought, you know, this thing is going to die down and so on. And, you know, there are a lot of conspiracy theories and so on. But when we started seeing the impact on the ground, and then I said, you know what, we as leaders should be saying the right thing. So, and, uh, you know, people are panic buying, people are... Yeah, the toilet paper's going mad in Australia. Shelves are completely cleared. It's, it's crazy. You know, it's actually prohibited to go to the masjid when you know that you are, you could be affected. Because to, you know, to affect a fellow human with a disease or with a virus of this nature, its prohibition is far greater than, you know, anything else because you have to save life. Remember, if a person's life is at stake, they're actually at some point allowed to consume that which may be prohibited otherwise in order to save the life. The reason is the prohibition of that thing is not as bad as the prohibition of the loss of life. So those people who think, well, you know what, I'm pious, I've never missed my Jum'ah, I know I do have a bit of a cough, I know I do have, but let me just go. They're actually perpetrating something heinous, very, it's a major sin, actually. You know, there was a brother in one of the Middle Eastern countries where he, he, he was in quarantine in the hospital. He disappeared on Friday at 1 o'clock. He came back at 2.30. They told him, where did you go? He said, I went to Salat al Jumma. And he had the virus. And, and it's just a shame that people think, no, how could you say this? This is Jumma. 
But you know what? It has happened in the past and it's not going to be the last time. It's going to happen in the future. This is where all the rules and regulations come in. Mufti, I guess it all comes back to the importance of having that knowledge. Like it's not enough to just have good intentions because you think you're doing something good, but without the appropriate, the right knowledge, you could in fact be committing a grave sin. And that's the scary part about it. And just on that note of knowledge, there's a lot of talk going around that coronavirus is a punishment from Allah. How should Muslims, you know, confront this allegation? I think it's quite clear that anything that happens, if it were to bring you closer to Allah, it's actually the mercy of Allah. And if it were to distance you from Allah, perhaps it may be a punishment of Allah. So uh, if you take a look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum during their time, there was a plague. Does it mean they were punished? The answer is no. So there, there were rules and regulations in place. And they, it was their time to be tested. Are you going to follow what Allah and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have laid down? Or are you going to do your own thing? And some of them passed away and so on. And you know, in fact, many people died. It doesn't necessarily mean that it was a punishment. For those who were driven away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or who became oblivious, it could have been. But to be honest, anything that draws you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not considered a punishment. It's actually a gift of Allah. I guess you reminded me, I think just last night, and I think for the past two nights, one of the imams in, in the local area, he's been doing uh, uh, the dua after the, the final raqa in the salah, and he's calling upon Allah, asking for his help. And I guess this is a sign that if this is what you're doing in this time, then I guess from what you're saying, it can't be a punishment because it's bringing us closer to Allah, allowing us to return to Allah. And I guess that's what all Muslims right now should understand. always well composed i just love the way he answers things or the way he just explains stuff uh but then i was wondering why do we have a lockdown what about those people that saw in the streets how does the government pay them back for their losses there's many things that are being shut down there are many people being sent home and probably won't get uh, paid how does the government come in and I just don't understand this whole virus thing I, like Mufti Meng said there's many theories others are saying countries that have been affected with malaria before can't exactly be affected by coronavirus I'm not sure I just read that a few minutes ago on Twitter saying there's a relationship between the malaria and the virus i don't know and they gave examples of india and africa but at the end of the day now we're seeing cases in africa i've said cases which are not making sense i guess we just have a buy to abide by the laws and just go with whatever the government is telling us so how how a family is going to be feeding their families then there's panic buying tissue of all things tissue of all things I don't understand the tissue thing, but then there's other things to worry about. People are hiking prices of, of goods. It's just a crazy world out there right now. Otherwise, like Mufti said, despite whatever is going on, I think we shouldn't forget God in this situation. We should, we can, we shouldn't risk other people's lives. If you have it, if you've been told you have it, or if you have it, or you know you have it, don't go around to places with people that don't have it. Be a brother's keeper. Always think about the people that you might affect in the process. Let's not be selfish. So, yeah, otherwise it was a very, very good thing. A city that never sleep is, sleeps is not sleeping. 
it should mean something maybe people had it and they didn't want to infect others i think it's a great move to some extent otherwise we shouldn't look at the negative in the situation we should look at the good things even if we can't gather in large numbers we can still gather in small numbers or even alone let it be a personal thing it shouldn't be about gathering with other people it should be about you alone and how you're reacting or responding to whatever we're going through right now so let me know what you feel about this podcast i, I think it was a podcast let me know what you feel about this video mufti Meng was in your thoughts over this coronavirus thing and just anything uh make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video